Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video 20, and we're starting chapter 7, the normal distribution. So last time we talked about the probability of an event, and we described the probability for a um, discrete um, distribution, and that involves a discrete random variable. So what is a random variable? A random variable is something that varies from person to person and that we're measuring. So here is an example. The number of eggs that a hen could lay in a week, from what I understand, are between 0 and 7. So they can lay up to one egg a day unless there's something special that happens, I guess. So that means that I can count that. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. And depending on, if I'm randomly selecting the hens, then that value for each is going to vary, or it could vary. And we don't know what it is until we select that individual hen. So because it varies, then it's uh, a random variable. And it, it's something that we're measuring. And then it's discrete because we can, we can count it, so it's discrete. So some event A in our sample space that's discrete, we can calculate that by counting up the number of ways that A can occur and dividing by the total number of possible outcomes that are in our sample space. This is a very important property here, and that's the, uh, for every probability distribution, the total probability has to be 1. You should also remember that the probability of any event is greater than or equal to 0. It's also less than or equal to 1. So it has to be between 0 and 1. It can be 0. It can be 1. It can't be anything else because probability can't be negative, and it can't be greater than 1, especially since the total probability in the whole distribution is 1. All right. So let's get started and uh, look at the overview of Chapter 7. We're going to talk about normal curves or the Gaussian curves and sampling distributions. We're going to look at the graphs of the normal distribution, uh, some different ones, uh, the general normal and the standard normal, and we're going to uh, then learn how to get uh, probabilities, and we're going to use areas to calculate the probability. Then we're going to talk about something called sampling distributions. That's the distribution of the statistics that we're using, like X bar or uh, S. We can they have a distribution themselves. And then um, that leads us to the central limit theorem, which is uh, one of the most important discoveries in statistics. So let's get started. Here is the normal distribution. I've drawn it over here, sketched it. And we use x as our random variable, whatever ever it is we're measuring. Mu is in the center. Here is the equation. Oops, sorry. Here is the equation of the line, and I'll quickly go over this. We have 1 over the square root of 2 pi, all times sigma out here, and then e is a natural number, and then this whole thing up here is the exponent, negative x minus mu squared. So x minus mu squared is going to be positive, divided by 2, which is positive, and also divided by sigma squared. Anything squared is positive, so we have to put a negative out here to get it negative. All right. It is bell-shaped. It looks kind of like a bell, if you look at the curve. And the peak is at mu. That's also the mean. It's symmetric about the mean mu. That tells you that you can draw a line right down the center, and both sides are identical except flipped. So if you folded this uh, down the middle, both sides should match up perfectly. That makes it symmetric. The curve approaches the horizontal line, so the, the curve for the distribution approaches the horizontal line here and here, but it never touches. That means it keeps going to infinity and to negative infinity. So this stretches from negative infinity to positive infinity, and yet the total area under this curve is exactly 1. Again, we're going to use area and probability uh, to mean the same thing in this case. All right. By the way, since the curve is symmetric, the mean, median, and the mode are all the same value. So mu not only has the properties of the mean, it also has the properties of the median. And the median says that half of the um, probability is over here, and half of it is over there. And we'll talk about that with the empirical rule here in just a minute. 
the standard deviation is given by sigma. So the mean is mu. So since we're uh, being educated and we want to say things properly, please use mu, and phonetically it would be that. So um, this symbol is the Greek letter mu, and the phonetics is mu. This is the Greek letter sigma, and it sounds just like that, sigma. So when you're thinking about these quantities, please think of them as mu and as sigma. And then when you hear somebody say mu or sigma, you know that that mu is the population mean, sigma is the population standard deviation, and then you'll follow along faster. It'll be easier to understand. So we're going to go over something called the empirical rule. Now, it's an approximation. These are approximate probabilities or percentages. And so what this is saying is mean mu is in the center. And if I go out one standard deviation to each side of the mean, how much, what proportion of the population or what percentage of the area is under the curve uh, between those two values? Well, for one standard deviation on each side, 68%. For two standard deviations on each side, 95%. Three standard deviations on each side, 99.7%. Again, they're approximate. Now let's look at the symmetry here. And so um, if we go out, well, let me erase a little bit more. If we go out one standard deviation above the mean, between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean will be 34% of the total area or probability. From mu down below it, one standard deviation, the same amount, 34%. Remember, these percentages are also probabilities. So the probability that one randomly selected individual is between mu and mu plus sigma is 0.34. And the probability that one randomly selected individual is um, between mu minus sigma and mu is still 0.34. Okay. Now look at this value here, 13.5%. That's, that's the area between two standard deviations below and one standard deviation below. And it's the same as this 13.5% over here from 1 to 2 in the positive, above. And from 2 to 3 above is 2.35. And from 2 to 3 below is 2.35. And from 3 down to negative infinity is 0.15%. And from 3 above the mean, 3 standard deviations above the mean to positive infinity is 0.15%. Now, this is 0.0015. Okay. So remember with your percentages to move to add two decimal places to go to the decimal. So let's do a quick example here and finish up section 1. If mu is 100, and I'm going to clean this up just a little bit so that it's not so messy and we can read it better. So if, if mu is 100 and sigma is 2, so the mean is 100, the standard deviation is 2, between what two values? I'm asking for values. And remember, I'm using x as our values. Between what two values are the middle 68% of the population? So, I go up here, and I see 68% right here. And so I say, okay, so I have a value for 68% using the empirical rule. What values go with that 68%? And I follow the line down, and I follow this line down, and I find mu minus sigma as a number, and mu plus sigma as a number. And so to get these values, I need to plug in for each of them. So mu minus sigma, for mu, I plug in 100. For sigma, I plug in 2. So mu minus sigma is 100 minus 2. That's 98. So this is 98. And then I do the same thing for mu plus sigma. I need to plug in for mu, which is 100, and sigma, which is 2. So again, mu goes to here. Sigma goes to here. There's a plus sign. 100 plus 2 is 102. This value here is 102.
And so there is 68% of the total population or probability within one standard deviation of the mean, and the values are 98 to 102. Okay, So the values we were looking for, this is the answer here, 98 to and 102. Those are the two values we asked. All right, so I'm going to skip down to here and say, remember to scan in your lecture notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. Make those notes neat for you. Update your formula sheet uh, with these percentages, especially uh, for the empirical rule. If you want to draw the picture, that's fine. Um, remember, uh, if you're taking the online course, you can basically have whatever you want on your formula sheet. If you're uh, taking a face-to-face -face class, you can only have formulas, and you will be allowed for the uh, empirical rule to have these three um, percentages and put uh, within one, within two, and within three standard deviations of the mean. Um, if you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. If you can't, email me. And I can help you through email, or we may be able to set up another time where we can meet. Uh, but send me a picture of your problem. Also send me a picture of the work that you've done. And if you do that, then I can help you pretty quickly. So I hope you take care, and we will see you next time.